Oh my god, uh, look at that! Amazing! I spent 7 days learning OpenGL. It was hard. But I think the results of this experiment shows that just having scratched the surface of graphics programming, you can produce some really cool looking effects. We're gonna see how I went from drawing a triangle on the screen to, well, then more triangles on the screen to making a really slick transition animation and the final boss drawing this beautiful scenery with some smoothing, soothing, moving waters. All by writing code using OpenGL. It's magical. I just love making things from scratch. It is so satisfying to build something from the ground up and when you take a look back, yeah, even though you make some questionable implementations sometimes, a lot of the time you at least have an interesting story to tell. The reason I wanted to learn OpenGL was because I had recently started working on creating tools I can use to speed up the game making process. I had been wanting to do a game jam for a while and I thought it would be really nice to have a library of tools like sprite sheet animation, scene management, it would be nice to have these tools because I don't want to use a game engine. I want to use this programming language called Rust. My favorite programming language. Okay, the water shader might be a bit overkill. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that in any game I make, but hey, it's really cool. But the scene transition shader I made will certainly come in handy in the future. So let's learn OpenGL, shall we? I found an OpenGL library that had a built-in tutorial into their GitHub repository. The tutorial looks really clean, so I decided to go with this tutorial and this OpenGL library. Now, this library, Gleam, is a wrapper over OpenGL. Now, you still need to handle the graphics pipeline, but without having to use the OpenGL's old and error-prone API. That's what it says in the documentation, at least. Sounds good to me. I went through the tutorial, and at part 7, we learn how to draw more complex geometry. I really wanted to load my own 3D models, but in the tutorial, they provide a already made model, this teapot. Look, it's a teapot. Tea! In hindsight, I should have just continued using this model provided, but instead I went on a side quest trying to load my own 3D models. Okay, I should probably clarify this. The teapot model was provided in code. It wasn't a 3D model file we loaded in. The tutorial doesn't teach you how to do that, but that's what I wanted to do. I tried three different object loading libraries, and I actually did manage to load a 3D model. But when I had reached this point, I had already spent way too long on this side quest. Colors and textures wasn't implemented. I should probably learn some more basics of OpenGL before I do this again. The tutorial was actually really good to follow along. The chapters were short and very good overall. Now, I did record some footage alongside this tutorial. It is not very informative, but uh, it is very interesting, so prepare yourself. There's light! We can see! And then we're going to say it's the color. It is very blue. And then it's red. No, it's in yellow, like the Swedish flag. Yes, let's do it like that. Oh, bum! Alright, the background is blue, so it looks a bit crazy. But look at that, we got some shading. Amazing! <laughs> I've gone through the complete tutorial, so that is a cause for celebration. Let's go! <laughs> Having completed the tutorial, I decided to do a very unusual method of expanding my graphics programming knowledge. I decided to use this new knowledge and apply it to a game framework. I recently started learning MacroQuad, which is a game framework I use to create this Atari game clone with. If I'm going to implement more complex drawing methods, I will have to look into the source code of this game framework to understand how they do the rendering. I started out pretty simple. How can I add my own shader into MacroQuad? This is when I implemented a transition shader. Shaders were pretty easy to implement because MacroQuad already has a material feature. Now, writing the shader code, however, is another story. I spent hours trying to figure out how to write this interpolation math function. Oh wait! OpenGL already has a function for this math formula I tried to figure out on my own. I have been trying for so long to figure out how to do this stupid calculation. After watching another video on how to make transitions by what? Who is this guy? GDQuest. He showed me there's a function in GLSL called Smooth Step. Look, it works. It's so smooth. And all I had to do was to write one little function here, a smooth step. Oh my god. <laughs> It is now day 5 of learning OpenGL, and I wanted to tackle something hard, a water shader. 
Now, I recorded pretty much every visual milestone I went through. We will see all the ups, all the downs. Here is a montage of two days of work creating a water shader. Yay! <laughs> Almost! Just this thing right here! Bruh! I just wrote some code, I have a good feeling about it. I'm gonna record my reaction live. If it works, of course it's going to work, it always works! Oh, that's actually super cool, but it is totally wrong. The amount of trial and error you go through when you write shaders, especially starting from scratch like I am, it's a lot of trial and error. Oh man, oh man. Uh, I just realized something silly. I need to multiply some stuff together and then it should definitely 100% work. Or should it really work? No, it should work. But it doesn't work. Why? It should not be upside down, it should go boing, 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 boing. It's upside down. I don't know why. It's so weird. Let's fix it. Nothing makes sense. This, this is how graphics programming is really like. <laughs> if this works, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be so cool. Ah, oh, the position is correct. Okay, this is good. It, it goes like this. <laughs> is this correct? Yeah, it, look, it's drawing this part of the screen, but it is drawing it like it's animated water. Oh my god, we did it, we did it. Now I need to flip this and then we can do some cool stuff. So the water shader is pretty much done. Uh, it's not the most beautiful water shader, but hey, I'm gonna find some art on H.io and plop it in and see how good we can make the water look. And uh, then I think this experiment will be done. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, this is the first thing I see. I haven't even positioned anything correctly, but look at that! Amazing! I had a lot of fun learning OpenGL, but I had many moments where I just had to take a break. Yeah, you could say rage quit, but I will call that a tactical break. Now, I should let you know that, yes, going into this, my graphics rendering knowledge wasn't the best, but it technically wasn't zero. I have been making games for a long time, and I have tackled a lot of similar things in programming that has helped immensely when learning OpenGL. I mean, yeah, I've done a little bit of shares before, I have even tried mesh generation, and I have also tried OpenGL many years ago, but I failed tremendously back then. Mainly because there are just some things you'll run into that seems really hard, maybe even impossible, and that is when a race quit may happen. In about three times during this process, I had to take a big break. Something that helped me stay on task and be unproductive was actually having a deadline. On the last day when I was making the water shader, it looked like this. And I realized I'm not gonna have a thumbnail if I don't complete this thing right here, right now. I should also mention I don't have work or school, so I had a lot of time during these days to work on this project. I wrote down some notes every day so you can see what I was working on. You can pause if you want to read through that. 3, 2, 1, go! The source code for the transition shader and water shader is already publicly available. Woohoo! In my 1010 toolbox library, uh, which I'll be expanding on in the future. As always, there's a link down below. Check it out. Yes. Goodbye. See ya! <laughs> <laughs>